Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Hope you're doing fantastic. We're continuing reading of Riyadh as Salihin, and I already finished volume two, so when we get to volume two, it'll be a wonderful refresher. My little one has been writing hadith from volume two to practice on her memorization as well, and so it's been great learning all these hadith, reading them, because when I listen to lectures, I try to find them and I can actually memorize them better. So it does help me in my learning style to read it myself and then also go and learn more about it individually on a hadith hadith basis. So we are in chapter 34, recommendations with regard to women. Allah the Exalted says, and live with them honorably. You will never be able to perfect justice between wives, even if it is your ardent desire. So, do not incline too much to one of them by giving her more of your time and provision, so as to leave the other hanging, i.e. neither divorced nor married. And if you do justice and do all that is right, and fear Allah by keeping away from all that is wrong, then Allah is ever of forgiving, most merciful. 4 129. So we have do all that is right, to be just, and don't openly flaunt favoritism. Abu Huraira, may Allah be pleased with him, reported, the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, said, Take my advice with regard to women. Act kindly towards women, for they were created from a rib, and the most crooked part of a rib is its uppermost. If you attempt to straighten it, you will break it, and if you leave it alone, it will remain crooked. So act kindly towards women. Abu Hardi and Muslim. <laughs> yeah. Being too forced and too much pressure can break a woman's mind. Understanding that women aren't perfect can help to make you more patient and also adapt and adjust accordingly to that individual woman's imperfections. Minding in, in terms of um, her not being abusive and such, right? I wouldn't want someone to be like, well, she's so mentally abusive and psychotic, therefore I have to just deal with it because she's like a broken rib and I can't straighten out her personality. I don't think that's what he means. In another narration, Al-Bukhari and Muslim, the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, said, A woman is like a rib. If you attempt to straighten it, you'll break it. If you benefit from her, you will do so while the crookedness remains in her. <laughs> oh, that's a good one. That's true. So she might not be that great with finance or, I don't know, maybe she can't make a good gravy. Something about her, there'll be a fault, but there'll be other benefits as well. Essentially letting us know that not all women are perfect. In another narration, the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, said, Woman has been created from a rib, and will in no way be straightened for you. So if you want to benefit from her, you will benefit from her while the crookedness remains in her. If you attempt to straighten her, you'll break her. And breaking her is divorcing her. Oh. Oh. That's interesting. All right, let's see the commentary on this one. Okay, the word asibu sawa balnisl. <laughs> I can't. Hey, I'm trying to do Dutch read. Mean. Take care of your wives. Whatever is the formation of the words of hadith, it stresses the importance of kind treatment to wives because woman is not only weaker than man by nature, but also less intelligent. On account of his being more intelligent and having greater patience, man should be more forgiving in his dealing with her. The secret of pleasant family life lies in this advice of the Prophet, peace be upon him, with its emphasis on kind treatment to wives. You can already hear the feminist screaming, Ree! Ree! What are you talking about? 
I mean, we women have patience towards our children, but there are times we're at our breaking point, you know? If you've ever seen, I don't want you to watch it, but just check out any reality TV show that has catty women in it. The Real Housewives of something, The Bad Girls Club. These women are like constantly fighting, having zero patience. Where men, when they live in a fraternity, usually have way more patience and are usually pulling pranks on one another and, you know, doing goofy things. Whereas women get catty and violent more fast than men. So I do think men have more patience and they have to have more restraint. A man who is in control of his emotions can deal with a woman having a temper tantrum. I've seen tons of feminists just having meltdowns and their husbands filming it and putting it online so they can protect themselves during a divorce. And some of the way these women behave, it's quite frightening. It's quite frightening. And yes, we are weaker than men in terms of our physical strength. And I mean biological females, not women who have taken testosterone and gotten plastic tits. Okay? I'm talking about real women. That yes, we are less strong than men. And the only way a woman can be stronger than a man is if she competes with the weakest male and takes testosterone artificially. Uh, but a man who's as tall as Shaq would beat, you know, the biggest woman, I'd argue. So, stop it, feminists. And intelligence, different types of intelligence, I'd argue. But, we'll see. Alright, this next one. Abdullah bin Zama, may Allah be pleased with him, reported that he heard the Prophet, peace be upon him, giving a speech when he mentioned the she-camel of Prophet Saleh, the she-camel of Prophet Saleh, and the man who had killed her. The Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, said, When the most wicked man among them went forth to kill the she-camel, 91.12, signifies that a distinguished, wicked, and most powerful chief of the people jumped up to kill the she-camel. Then he, peace be upon him, made mention of women and said, Some of you beat your wives as if they were slaves, and then lie with them at the end of the day. Then he, peace be upon him, peace be upon him admonished them against laughing at another's passing of wind, saying, why does any of you laugh at another doing what he does himself? A Bukhari and Muslim. It's hard because I don't laugh at farts anymore because now I've changed. But I used to watch South Park and Family Guy, and when they would fart, it would make me laugh. But now when I'm like, if you hear a fart, you're like, oh, stop it. Say excuse me. So you can change that sense of humor. But if you're ignorant and don't know, you can learn it and stop it. Okay. Okay. Abu Huraira, may Allah be pleased with him, reported, the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, said, A believer must not hate his wife, believing woman. If he dislikes one of her characteristics, he will be pleased with another. Oh, okay. This is important. You don't want hate to arise in a marriage, but... Don't let the hate get so high that, you know, you forget to look at the good, too. It's quite informative. Commentary. This hadith also contains a very wise counsel for a happy married life. It tells us that every person has certain qualities as well as some shortcomings. Man has been advised here to overlook the shortcomings that he does not like in his wife and appreciate her good qualities. Similarly, a woman is advised to ignore the shortcomings of her husband and admire his good qualities. Aha! So here we see something that would be good ammunition against the feminists who seem to really be quite spiteful towards everything men have built. Especially now so when I go on LinkedIn and I just see all these feminists you know, calling men oppressors and you know, slave masters and whatnot, blaming them for everything. And the feminists who say, men ain't 
blank, you know, the S word, their nastiness. Here we must watch ourselves to where neither the man or the woman overly focuses on shortcomings and doesn't have a sense of mercy towards the other person. Okay. Amr bin al Aswas al Jushami, may Allah be pleased with him, reported that he had heard the Prophet, peace be upon him, saying on his farewell pilgrimage, after praising and glorifying Allah and admonishing people, treat women kindly. They are like captives in your hands. You do not owe anything else from them. In case they are guilty of open indecency, then do not share their beds and beat them lightly, but if they return to obedience, do not have recourse to anything else against them. You have rights over your wives, and they have their rights over you. That's true. Your right is that they shall not permit anyone you dislike to enter your home, and the right is that you should treat them well in a matter of food and clothing. Okay, so that's a it's brilliant. Okay, because here, the beating part. What I find quite interesting about this is that so many people today are incapable of acknowledging the viciousness, the violence, the pressure, psychoticness, schizophrenic nature of some women. Growing up in Philadelphia, I can't tell you how many times I've seen really masculine, wild women beating up on dudes. And it is quite normalized. I've even heard now, with some of these feminists on TikTok, they threaten to peg men. They say, like, oh, I'll peg you. And it's okay for the guidelines of the community standards on the social media for a woman to threaten to sodomize a man through a pegging. That's okay. But if a man were to say, I'll slap you, that's somehow violence. It's quite interesting how so much permissibility and tolerance towards women's aggressive violence behavior has led to them not ever thinking there will be repercussions for men. I mean, for women upon men. Now, if you have a young brother, which I all my brothers are younger than me, I would never tell them they couldn't defend themselves from a lunatic wife. It is quite clear today that the evil actions of some women are very open and they even brag about it and upload it to TikTok. And some of these women slap and spit, pull the hair, pull the beard, throw things at their men, and trying to rationalize with someone who is a psychotic abuser, sometimes a man has to defend himself. And I don't see anything wrong in that. I would not want my, if I had a son, or my brothers, or my cousins, to just be a punching bag for an abusive woman. And some women have done horrific crimes to men and dismembered them, shanked them, cut off their parts. I follow a lot of true crime series and the, the actions that some women have done to men is quite scary. And it's fascinating how the really bleeding heart, pearl clutching liberals will never hold a woman accountable for her aggressive nature and they can't fathom a situation where a husband would have to discipline a woman in that way. They always frame it as the woman is the angel and the man is the demon. And this is why I think there's so many divorces, there's bad relationships, because not every woman is as rational. And some women get approached differently. And philosophizing on what is to smack or to push or to grab by the arm and hold them really tight. You know, you can play semantics with rhetoric all day concerning what the true connotations and degrees of the word of beating means. You can beat in self-defense. You can do certain things that on the surface from a bystander may not make sense, but from the inner situation does make sense. And that's why I think the justice system is so skewed against men because it, it's really hard for men who suffer domestic violence or 
mentally abused stuff from them to get justice. And some women do crimes. They deserve a beating. You know, if this if a woman takes your dog and throws it off the balcony, feminists will say you're not allowed to smack that woman. But, you know, it's righteous indignation, righteous rage. And don't say, oh, a woman would never do that. I've seen videos of women taking a baseball bat, smashing up their husband's really nice car, and laughing as they do it. And then the feminists will tell you, a man has no rights. And this is why there's so much injustice. It's like she deserves at least, you know, a backhand. And then these same feminists will go and listen to Snoop Dogg. They'll go listen to other musicians who promote nonsensical abuse towards women. So they're not even consistent in their own ethics. They just love to make women uh, this sort of angel on a pedestal. And so everything has a degree. Everything has a nuance. And for men who haven't ever encountered a woman that they'd want to hit, you've been blessed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But hopefully you have a sister who can handle the business for you and protect you from crazy women. Because the court system, due to the feminist influence, uh, makes men very unsafe around crazy women and expects little boys to just take abuse from girls because they're girls and allows feminists to say the most violent, vicious things against men and then not letting men have the same privilege in turn. That's why when women say they're oppressed in America, they're actually suppressing men in the same terms of equality. A woman can threaten and degrade men and say they're going to peg him. But if a guy said the same thing, they'd be like, oh, this is misogyny. And then even with women, if you don't side with a feminist, they say you have internalized misogyny. So you can't really win with secular liberal feminist atheists. They're very irrational people, very broken, bitter, divorced, lonely. So it's really hard for them to understand things outside of their narrative. They're very broken people. Now there's some commentary here for us. Here again, we find justification for beating one's wife in case of her persistence and default, but it is to be done on the matter prescribed in the hadith quoted above. Two, it is responsibility of the wife that during the absence of her husband, besides the guarding of her own chastity and property of her husband, she should not let in anyone who is not liked by her husband, however closely related that person be to her. Oh, okay. However closely she related that person. So, you know, this is interesting. My grandpa doesn't like my grandma's brother, but my grandma didn't listen for a while and still let him in the home. And he later did some actions that got him in trouble with the law. And my grandpa, he doesn't get listened to in that authority and it makes him quite miserable that my grandma doesn't listen about not letting people in the house who he doesn't like because it makes his home feel uncomfortable and it's very un unpleasant. Your home is your sanctuary, your home is your place of peace and recharging. And to have someone you dislike there because your wife let them in and she's not respecting you is quite wrong. So I, I, I really agree with this one. I've seen it in my own life. Three, it is the responsibility of the husband to provide, according to his means, good food and clothes to his wife. Good food. Now this one is important to me as well because my husband provides good food. Women will look at other things in a, in a man, but will he buy you good groceries? One of the best things is that a man doesn't have to be rich, but can he buy you organic food? If he can, that's a good man, right? Or at least to buy you something that isn't fast food. He can give you a good bag of rice, a good bag of beans, a good, you know, pineapple, stuff like that. And clothing is important. Doesn't mean you get to shop at Prada and those places. But that, you know, you can order you a couple of nice clothes or whatnot. All right. Alhamdulillah. We learned quite a lot in this section. It was quite beneficial. Hope you enjoyed.